all right so let's start chapter 11 now we'll be talking about corporations and before i start talking about corporations well let me tell you that when we are uh because we are focusing on sole proprietorship partnerships and corporations so the first question you would make yourself is okay i'm gonna start a business what type of business entity should i choose well if you are doing this on your own no partners you can go either via sole proprietorship which is straightforward less uh, inexpensive or you can go via corporation because you can be the only shareholder of your own corporation and i'll tell you why you would choose a corporation and not a sole proprietorship in a while the other uh, alternative is if you have partners one or more partners then you could go partnerships or corporations so corporations a corporation is always an option if you are doing business on your own or with more partners and sole proprietorship is if you're doing business on your own and you want to go simple it is okay for you to have your personal assets at risk eventually the business you are providing you are performing is not so risky etc or if you have more part if you have partners you would go uh, partnership okay so that's the first thing uh, first question you would make yourself uh, the first and main concept for corporation is that it is a separate legal entity what does this term mean this expression mean separate legal entity well a corporation is like a person but it's not a person as a human being it is a person in law it is a separate entity but this entity does not exist in uh, reality but in the law so um, let me give you this example when steve jobs passed away did apple die no apple did not die apple is still there as a company because apple is a corporation because apple is a separate legal entity if apple were steve jobs sole proprietorship then apple would have died when steve jobs died as well you see so when we are sole proprietors we are the business but when we have a corporation there is actually this separate legal entity this separate person and this concept is very important because first of all technically speaking we don't say i have a corporation i own a corporation no one owns the separate legal entity what people own is share they own shares of the corporation so again i can form my own corporation but technically speaking i would be the only shareholder of this corporation okay that's important and also it is the separate legal entity the corporation itself that has that owns the assets that is vicarious, vicariously liable that has to uh, face the financial liabilities it is not the shareholder it is this separate legal entity so if you want to have more protection for your personal assets even if you are doing business on your own you would go for a corporation not sole proprietorship because everything you could lose in principle and it's a general rule there there's an exception there may be exceptions but as a general rule all a shareholder can lose in a corporation is the amount they have invested they cannot lose anything else okay and again 
when Steve Jobs passed away, the corporation itself was still owning the offices, the patents, the trademarks, the copyrights, the products, the inventories, everything. It is the legal entity that owns everything, not the shareholders. Okay, so that's a very important concept for a corporation. Uh, this is just um, detailing a bit more. So you see here, a shareholder is the one who owns shares. Shares of what? Of a corporation. And the corporation itself, the separate legal entity, is the one that owns assets. Okay, so this is very important. And this is all related to this separate legal entity concept. Agents. Well, we just uh, studied agency law last week. So because the corporation is this legal entity, there's no person that performs the activities of a corporation. The corporation itself does not perform their activities. Okay? So people will perform the activities of a corporation. And when people do this, they are agents of the corporation. I'm talking about the employees. I'm talking about senior executives. I'm talking about directors. So everyone who acts on behalf of a corporation, they are agents. On the top of being employees, etc., etc. Okay? So there's a question here. Uh, two people could own the corporation. Uh, yeah, two or more, as many people as um, as they want. But technically speaking, remember, people do not own the corporation. People, two people or more people, they own shares of a corporation. And then they can sell their shares. So let's say tomorrow morning, you want to buy shares of Apple. You want to buy shares of Samsung. You want to buy shares of uh, BlackBerry, you will be a shareholder. You do not own the company, but you own shares. What are shares? Shares are rights. So you have a right to a profit. You have a right to a portion of the uh, corporation. Okay? Was that clear? Okay, moving on. So, some advantages and advantages of a corporation. Well, the first and the main advantage is the limited liability. Remember, if you are a sole proprietor or if you are a partner in a partnership, except for the limited partners or the limited liability or the partners in an LLP, but in a partnership or sole proprietorship, you have unlimited liability. Here, in a corporation, no. Your liability is limited. Limited to the amount you have invested. So tomorrow, not tomorrow, let's say two years ago, um, 20, years ago 20 years ago, I purchased shares of uh, Blockbuster. Not sure you remember this company. They rented DVDs, etc. So Blockbuster... By the way, I was reading those days. Blockbuster wanted to... Uh, Netflix was for sale of uh, 50 million. And Blockbuster was not interested in purchasing Netflix. So Blockbuster went bankrupt. They shut down. So let's say, but coming back to my example, 20 years ago, I purchased shares of Blockbuster. They went bankrupt. The company went bankrupt. The entity went bankrupt. All I lost was the amount I invested in the shares. I didn't lose anything else. And my personal assets were protected. Okay? There's an exception uh, to this limited liability. And when I say here, lift the corporate veil. Well, this is a metaphor. Okay? This metaphor uh, actually means when this limited liability becomes unlimited. But this is only in cases shareholders or directors, they, they commit fraud 
while performing the business of the corporation. Let me give you this example. So I have I, I formed my own corporation. I am the only sh shareholder of uh, my company. And I go to a bank and I get a loan for 50000 But then instead of using this money in the corporation, I use for personal uh, interest. I take my family to uh, Cancun and we spend a month there. So we are back and then my company cannot uh, repay the loan. So my company defaults on the loan. Because I use the loan for personal uh, interest, personal use and not the company use, this can be regarded as a fraud. So in this case, my liability would be unlimited for this transaction. So if my company could not afford to repay the bank, the bank could pursue my personal assets. But that's an exception. The general rule is the limited liability. Okay? This is um, important to know. <clears throat> Other advantages. There may be taxes advantages, but I will, I will not detail this because uh, this involves tax uh, legislation and this is a bit more complex but just remember that um, if you are thinking about paying uh, less uh, taxes uh, less on tax you may want to speak with a lawyer uh, and form a corporation and see what are the alternatives to save some tax also in terms of succession and transferability well let me go back to uh, Steve Jobs example when Steve Jobs passed away, his ownership of the shares transferred to his estate, to his wife and children, to his heirs. So the company didn't die. The shareholder died and then their ownership passed to their uh, estate or Maybe Steve Jobs could donate, could donate part, could donate um, all the shares uh, he, he had on Apple uh, through a will. So that's also an advantage. And this is opposed to sole proprietorship, as I said. Because if you pass away, um, when a sole proprietor passes away, the sole proprietorship is done. The same thing for a partnership of two partners. I told you, when one passes away, the partnership is also done, dissolved. This is not the case for a company, because the company is the separate legal entity. Uh, shareholders, they owe no duty to the company. This is for more medium to large corporations. And why? Because, for example, uh, when I say shareholders owe no duty to the company, I'm saying that they may compete with the company they own shares. So I may be, in other words, I may be a shareholder of Apple and also of Samsung and also of Google. Those are all competing companies, but as a shareholder, I owe no duty to, to any of those companies. And I say to medium, uh, medium to large corporations, why? Because most small corporations, they have only one shareholder. So when a corporation has only one shareholder, not always, but usually this one shareholder is also a director, is also the CEO. So let's say I started my own company and I have a gardening uh, service company and I am the gardener. So it means I am the shareholder, I am the director, I am the gardener, I am the manager, I am everything in the company. Okay? So in this case, I would owe a duty to the company. But if I am only a shareholder, shareholders, they owe no duty to the corporation. And this is also an advantage. So a question here. In a partnership, if one partner dies, can there... Can their heir take over and keep the partnership going? Uh, not automatically. Only if in the partnership agreement, if they have agreed like this. 
So you would need to have a section, a clause, saying that when one partner dies, their interest will go automatically to their heir, and their heir will automatically become partners from that time on. But if there's no agreement in this respect, then no. So again, partners would need to agree for this to happen. Okay? <clears throat> So some disadvantages for a corporation. Well, corporation is a bit more complex. Uh, if you have a corporation, um, you are more likely to need a lawyer or a law firm to maintain the document of your corporation. And any changes you have in your corporation, any minor change. So if you name a different director, if you change your business address, any change, there may be a need to uh, draft documents and eventually file them. You also have to file annual uh, returns. So it's a bit more complex, not highly complex, but a bit more complex uh, to own a corporation. And also, if you are a minority shareholder, you have no say, or you have very little say, not no, but very little say in the corporation uh, because you are a minority. But this is not true for partnership. Remember I told you that major changes in a partnership requires unanimous consent. Here for a corporation, if you are a minority shareholder and if the majority shareholder decides uh, going south and you want it to go north, then you have no say they will go south because you are a minority shareholder okay and because of the maintenance the uh, need of professionals such as accountants uh, lawyers and others it is a bit more expensive to uh, have a corporation to operate a business via corporation and not uh, the other types <clears throat> Okay, so I'm, I'm skipping this one. And the process of incorporation. Well, this you don't need to know in details. You just need to have a general idea. Um, I'm, not, I'm not expecting you to know this for your exam, for your midterm two, okay? So don't worry about the details of uh, the process of incorporation. All you need to know, uh, well, Coming from the concept of a separate legal entity, because it is a separate legal entity, you, ha you actually have to form a corporation. You set up a corporation. A corporation does not, is not created automatically. You have to form it. And how do you form a corporation? How do you set up a corporation? You have to file documents. You have to come up with documents. And here, the most important for us will be, uh, sorry, will be the notice of articles. So the notice of articles, they are, um, if I'm not mistaken, I have uploaded um, an example to you. They are a uh, form in which you inform the uh, governmental authorities, the name of the corporation, the uh, place of business, the number of shares you are issuing, who the first directors are, so this you have to file with the document with the government and then you have the articles the articles they are like the uh, bylaws of the corporation so what is a bylaw if you live in a in a condominium you may know what a bylaw is a bylaw is a set of rules that prescribe rights and also obligations so the articles for a corporation will be a document, a set of rules that will prescribe rights and obligations of shareholders, directors, senior executives, etc. And again, we talked about capacity in chapter seven. So if the shareholders want to limit the capacity of the corporation, they would do this in the articles. In the articles, they would have a clause or a section saying that, for example, this company cannot do business with the government, with the provincial government, 
or with the federal government, or this company cannot do business abroad, or whatever the limitation they want. So this would be limiting the capacity. And by the way, if you go to uh, Small Business BC, uh, even online, you can find a step-by-step uh, -step, uh, process to start your own company. So you can do this. You can use their templates uh, and it's going to be okay for most people. If you are forming a corporation with more partners, more shareholders, then again, I would highly recommend speaking uh, with a lawyer, uh, getting legal advice so that you have a customized uh, package. Okay. okay, so this is how you form a corporation. Uh, you file here in BC, you file a notice of article, uh, sorry, a notice of articles and the bylaws, the articles, you don't need to file. This is just an internal uh, corporation document. Okay, and by the way, uh, one thing that I'm not clearly mentioning here in the slides, but you should know. In BC, we have provincial corporations and federal corporations. So a provincial corporation will do business only within the province. If they want to do business with other provinces, they would need to register in that other provinces as well. So you would be better off forming a federal corporation to do business uh, nationwide. But if you want to do business only within a province, so if you have a coffee shop or if you have a service company that only provides services here in uh, BC, you would be better off uh, having only a BC corporation. Okay, so this is uh, important to know as well. Uh, those are examples of other incorporated bodies. Capacity we have discussed. As I said, in general, corporations will have full capacity, full capacity, but shareholders, they can limit the capacity in the articles, as I have just explained. Okay. How are corporations funded? Well, there's two ways to fund a corporation one way is called the equity funding what is equity funding well you give me money and i give you equity i give you shares of the corporation and another way is to borrow money when i borrow money from wealthy individuals from financial institutions i am not giving equity I am actually entering in a credit relationship. So I borrow money and I have to pay it back. Okay, so two ways, borrowing money or equity um, or funding by equity. Funding by equity, it is selling the shares. It is giving you equity, giving you shares for money. Uh, in general, there's two types of uh, shares. They can be par value or no par value. The no par value one is the most common. Why? Because the shares, they have no fixed value. The market will determine the um, value of the share. In BC, you can still have a par value share. So when you start the corporation when you file the notice of articles you would say i am issuing one million shares or could be one share and this share is worth one dollar ten dollars ten thousand dollars you can determine the value you want but this is not common what is common is a no no par value uh share so the market will determine uh how much the share is worth at a given moment, okay? Depending on the success, depending on the profit the company makes, on the assets they have. So common practice is to have no par value uh, shares issued. Okay, question here. If I incorporate a federal company, can I do business in the entire country? Uh, yes, yes. To do business uh, in the entire country, you would go um, with a federal corporation. 
You could also do this through a provincial corporation, but then you would need to be registering in each province. So it's better to go uh, federal corporation. Uh, all right, so some uh, rights and restrictions for shares. Well, let me tell you this. Lawyers, they actually, they can create several types of shares they want. The uh, legislation and the dynamics for shares, they are quite complex. Here, for us, for, for academic purposes, we are only looking at common shares and preferred shares. But again, keep that in mind. You don't need to memorize this. I just need to make this disclaimer that uh, lawyers, they can create common shares with preferred shares rights and vice versa. Okay, I just need to tell you this, but for, for you, you should just memorize that common shares, they are the shares that are really related to ownership because the common shareholder is the one that has the right to uh, elect directors, has the right to vote, has the right to get property of the corporation when the corporation is ended. So. I usually say that the common shareholder is the real owner of the uh, corporation. Whereas the preferred shares, so another type of share, this is mostly for investors. So investors, they will mostly have preferred shares. Why? Because usually they don't have the right to vote. But as I said, I know corporations in which preferred shareholders, they vote. They do have a right to vote. So it depends on how... Uh, the system is created within a corporation. But the preferred shareholders, they are aiming at getting dividends. So they are mostly investing in the corporation. Okay? So you should know this difference. Common shareholder is the one who has the right to vote, is the real, between quotations, real owner of the corporation, whereas uh, preferred shareholders, they are mostly investors because they have a preference in the dividends. Okay. Uh, so borrowing money, borrowing money is also, uh, is, is straightforward. So as a corporation, it is the separate legal entity that will borrow money, can borrow money from, from anyone, any uh, institution. Uh, there's also another way to borrow money from multiple creditors at the same time. So how does a corporation do this? They issue either what is called a debenture or a bond. So in the stock market or through financial institutions, they have their debentures offered to anyone, bonds offered to anyone. So we, we can buy debentures or bonds from corporations. And when corporations are offering either debentures or bonds, they are actually borrowing money from multiple creditors because those debentures or bonds, they will be repaid. They will be paid back. So we are going to get our money back plus some interest. Okay. Well, we will. Uh, it's, it's not right to say we will. We may get because if the company goes bankrupt, we may not get uh, the money we invested. So it's a bit risky. What is the difference between a debenture and a bond? Well, a debenture is non-asset secured. So it is more risky to have a debenture rather than a bond because in a bond, there's always an asset securing it. So when a company issues a bond, they have their machinery, their... Uh, offices, their manufacturing plants, uh, well, any assets, they secure the bond. Because if they cannot uh, pay back or repay the bond, the bondholders, they could seize the asset, sell the asset, and then recover some of the money they invested. With a debenture, there's no asset securing it. So you may, buy, you may get a debenture and hope the company pays uh, back. But if they don't, 
you just lose what you invested. So it's more uh, risky. Uh, so this is a chart uh, detailing you a bit more the funding of corporations, as I just uh, explained. This is also for academic purposes. So a closely held corporation is a corporation in which the shares are not openly offered to the public. So most corporations are closely held corporations. Only few corporations have their shares offered in the stock market. Uh, so if you if you can buy shares like a Dollarama, you can buy shares uh, from Dollarama. So Dollarama is a broadly held corporation. Whereas, um, <clears throat> I don't know, a small company, the small uh, coffee shop close to your house, it may be a closely held corporation because their shares are not offered uh, to the public. Okay. So let's look at the people behind a corporation. Well, we know that our shareholders, they own shares of the corporation and they owe no duty uh, to the corporation. The shareholders, they will elect directors. So the directors elected by shareholders will be the ones who will set the strategy of the company, will be the ones appoint, appointing the CEO, the CFO, the senior executives. Okay, And then the company usually has a board of directors, th three or more directors. This board will meet every three months, every four months, every semester, every year. It depends on the corporation. So uh, those people, they are elected by the shareholders. But uh, careful attention here. The directors, they owe a duty to the corporation. Two important things here. First, remember, shareholders do not owe a duty to the company. But directors, they do owe a duty to the company. The second thing is, the directors, even though they are elected by shareholders, their duty is owed to the company, not to the shareholders. Okay? If a shareholder is not happy with a director they have elected, the only thing they can do is not to re-elect that director in the next year or find any way to... Uh, get the, sh the director out of the company in a legal way but the director can uh, do whatever they find uh, it is best for the corporation not to the shareholders okay this is very important and directors they cannot use insider knowledge so this means that i can be a shareholder of apple and Samsung at the same time, because as a shareholder, I owe no duty to the corporation, but I can only be a director to one of those companies because they are competing companies. And because as a director, I owe a duty to the corporation, so I cannot uh, be director for two competing companies, okay? Uh, directors, they may be personally liable for some of those issues here if they don't pay wages, taxes, etc. And then the directors, as I said, they will point, uh, uh, they will select uh, senior officers, CEO, CFO, CMO, CTO, all the C's that exist. And then this those senior executives, they will hire management. They will hire managers and employees and et cetera, et cetera. So you may, you may um, realize that this structure I'm explaining to you is more related to medium to large corporations. Small companies, they are not that complex. As I said, I may have my own company. I am the only shareholder of my company. And I am everything. I am a shareholder. I am a director. I am a manager. I am uh, I am everything in the company. But for more medium to large corporations, they have this 
more complex way of managing of um, running operating the business okay uh, shareholders so they do not owe a duty to the corporation but they have some rights they have right to vote they have right to have um, access to reports records of the companies uh, financial records um, once a year if the company publishes or if the company uh, some companies they have audited financial statements so the shareholders they have a right to get a copy uh, of these for example so question for you okay so where's there's a fiduciary relationship uh, e directors of the corporation and the corporation yes that's correct a agent and third party yes that's e e is an ego mm -hmm. e is the right one so directors they owe a fiduciary duty they are in a fiduciary relationship with the corporation okay agents they are in a fiduciary relationship with the principal not the third party officer they are in a fiduciary relationship with the corporation not the shareholders directors the same thing they are in a fiduciary relationship with the corporation not the shareholders and shareholders they are not in a fiduciary relationship with the corporation remember they have no uh, they owe no duty to the corporation. So yes, the right answer is E. E as an ego. Okay? So moving on. Uh, shareholders, they have some protections. Okay? So even though minority shareholders, uh, they may have very little say in a company because they are minority, but they have some protections. And the one I would like to emphasize is this derivative action or also known as representative action well let me exemplify this to you so let's say a uh, company lost money in a transaction with another company and the director of the company you owe shares uh, does not want to sue that company for whatever reasons they just understand that they don't want to sue to recover the loss. So as a minority shareholder, you can use this derivative action to sue the other corporation, the one that caused loss to the corporation you own shares. So you would sue them on your own name, but on behalf and interest of the corporation trying to recover that money. So even though you have, as a minority shareholder, you have very little say in the company, but there are some protections uh, for you. And one of them, as I said, is the derivative action. Okay, just as an example. You don't need to memorize all of them, but you just need to understand that there are protections for uh, shareholders. Okay. <clears throat> dividends. So dividends are not a right. Well, dividends, they will be paid when the company is profitable. When the company is profitable, they may pay dividends. But the decision to pay dividends uh, is on the directors and senior executives. The company may be profitable, but they may decide not to pay dividends. They may decide to use this money to uh, invest in the company, invest in other technologies, uh, purchase other companies. So a shareholder cannot demand a dividend to be paid, okay? It is a decision of the company. However, there are companies that historically pay dividends every year. This does not become a right, but if you want to invest in a company because of their dividends, because you cannot force them, you cannot demand them, you should look for companies that have historically paid dividends. Then you would buy shares of those companies. Uh, usually banks, usually banks, they pay dividends. 
So uh, <clears throat> it's it may be good to have uh, shares from banks. But again, if the bank decides not to, you cannot force because you don't have a right to. So, as I said, for more medium to large corporations, there will, there will be the shareholders, they will be electing the directors who will form the board of directors, who will then appoint officers, and the officers will then hire management, employees, etc. So that's how the structure uh, functions here. Okay? How is a corporation ended? Well, it is dissolved. Uh, the shareholders may decide to dissolve the corporation. But the main way a corporation is ended here in Canada is when they do not file the annual return. If a company fails, neglects to file an annual return, a form that is required, for two years in a row, the company is automatically dissolved. So most small companies here in Canada, they they were not successful, shareholders decide not to move on with the company. They just neglect, they just forget to file the annual return and two years later, the company is automatically dissolved. Okay? Wow, <clears throat> that was a bit fast. How was it? Questions, doubts, 